morning everyone. Welcome to our devotion this uh, Tuesday morning. It's great to be able to connect with you again as we continue our look at 2 Corinthians 12 and uh, this amazing passage where the first part is quite uh, difficult really to understand in terms of this revelation that Paul says that he received and for 14 years he kind of kept it to himself. And then, of course, the verse that we uh, know all too familiar, verse 8, around uh, the thorn in the flesh and how uh, God afflicted him with this and uh, how God told him that his grace was sufficient for him. And we're exploring that text in the light of our own difficulties, our own setbacks and challenges (coughs) and sorrows and suffering. And uh, we pray that as we do that, that wherever we are right now, that we will also uh, gain that same assurance that Paul had uh, in spite of what he was going through. And as we said, for some reason, God uh, gave Paul this affliction. Uh, He allowed it into his life to humble him. And we are told that uh, he had told him that he wasn't going to take it away. And he was somebody who probably had more faith than anyone who ever lived. He was absolutely sold out for God. And yet, in spite of asking God, God refuses to take away this, this what we believe was a, a physical affliction. Like the, the faith healer who cannot, you know, receive healing himself. I remember going to see John Wimber many years ago in the Standard Bank Arena in Joburg. And how, you know, it was, it was just amazing to see some of the folk who were there. And there were probably a few thousand in their arena. And how many people came to the front and... Uh, John Wimber at the time could hardly speak because he had throat cancer and he had a little uh, uh, kind of voice thing on his on his vocal cords to try and project his his voice. And, uh, you know, and so many times people had prayed for him. He had prayed for his own situation and yet ultimately he succumbed to that that cancer. And and so we can't really understand, you know, how that is possible. And yeah. In the same instance, we have a guy like Paul, who was such a man of faith, and yet for whatever reason, he he had prayed for this affliction, and God chose not to take it away. And we read that Paul said that it was to to humble him. In the King James Version, it says that Satan uh, was permitted to buffet Paul. And this word means to beat or strike with a fist. The, The tense of the verb indicates that this affliction was was either constant or recurring. And when you stop to think that Paul had led us to write, I mean, he had trips to make, sermons to preach, churches to visit, uh, dangers to face as he ministered, you can understand this this was no light light matter. No wonder he prayed three times, just as his Lord had done in the garden, that the affliction might be removed from him. I think it's true when, when difficulty or affliction some kind of suffering comes into our lives, there are several ways we can deal with it. Uh, some people become bitter and angry and blame God for robbing them of, of their freedom and pleasure. Others just give up and fail to get any blessing out of the experience because they will not uh, put any courage into the experience. Uh, still others just grit their teeth and kind of put on a brave front determined to endure whatever they're going through till the very end. And whilst that might seem a courageous response, it usually drains them of the strength that they just need for daily living. And after time, they they may just ultimately collapse. Paul did not know whether this thorn in the flesh was a temporary testing from God or a permanent experience that he would have to learn to live with. And three times we, we read that he he, he pleaded, and that doesn't mean, uh, like with Peter's denials, that this took all uh, took place all at the same time. No, he asked God in three different seasons of his life to remove this thorn in the flesh. And you can imagine what his prayer sounded like. Lord, you know, you've got to give me some relief here. I'm your servant. I have to travel all over Asia Minor. Uh, you've called me to proclaim your, your gospel to the nations, especially to the Gentiles. 
I'm going to have to tell these skeptics that there was a Jewish rabbi who came into this world, who died and rose again from the dead, and that they can know you too as their savior. And all the time they're going to look at me and say, you've got to be kidding. You know, how can we believe you? What's this God of, of yours done for you? And how can we believe you and the God you call upon uh, to help you in your need is, is silent? Uh, it just doesn't make sense. And so, Lord, I, I, I'm going to have no credibility. Please remove this thorn. Uh, you have no idea how, how much better it's going to be without it. And here we have the great apostle Paul, who we know was ultimately martyred for his faith. And yet all his prayers and pleadings seem to fall on deaf ears. In other words, it was like God was saying no. Like us, Paul would not have understood why God would not answer his prayers. And if he prayed three times, it was almost to no avail. Almost like God didn't care, like God wasn't really interested. The same Jesus who met him on the Damascus Road, who called him by name, doesn't seem to bother to heed his prayers now. And there were times that he must have felt quite abandoned by God. The question is, why? So maybe you're in a place like that right now, kind of wondering if God still knows your name, whether he answers prayers at all, whether you're not just kind of making it all up because it, it helps somehow when you're going through a difficult time to believe that there is someone up there looking out for you. And if the truth be told, you, you're not always convinced that there's someone there at all. So often God's silence is mistaken for his absence. And then in the midst of of that that time of suffering or sorrow god suddenly whispers my grace is sufficient for you the promise is god is the promise of god is that he his grace is there in our time of need that his grace is indeed sufficient and that is his power his his strength his energy his presence will help us to endure the difficult circumstances we find ourselves in. And so God says to Paul, I'm not going to take it away, but I will give you grace. And when you go among the heathen na nations and preach my gospel, and people look at you and ask why, remember, I will give you more grace. When people stare at you, I will give you more grace. When they jeer at the message that you come to proclaim, I will give you more grace. Even when they persecute you, I will give you more grace. I will give you what I've made available to every believer in Christ, my grace. I think there's a tendency for us when we are not relying on the sufficiency of that grace to try and help God along by doing things to, to please him. Almost like we think God will come through for us if we do those things. And when you think about it, that's exactly what, what children do, isn't it? Um, and they ask mom if they can maybe go and play with a friend or play on their computer or do TV games, whatever it is. And mom says no. And they can't understand it. And mom says no. You're not going to do that until you've done this, 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 this and that. And so you go off and you do all those things and then come back to mom and mom still says no. And you say, but why? I've done all the things you asked me to do. And mom says, because I say so. Now, it's not great hearing that. In fact, it causes us to be quite indignant and, and even angry when, when that happens. And I guess that's sometimes the way we feel when, when God says no. You know, we've done all these things and it just doesn't seem to have made, made any difference. And so when, you, when God says no, you can either kind of lift a fist in God's face and walk away. Or you can choose to accept the outcome as, as Paul did. God, you're sovereign and you know what is best for me. You know what's in my best interests. And if you aren't going to remove this thorn, please just grant me more grace to endure it. And that's precisely what Paul did. And friends, that's what we need to do as well. God says, my power is made perfect in weakness. God is really saying, I'm going to allow you to be weak. And then I'm going to show off my strength through you. And people will come along and say, you know, look at him. Despite all he's gone through, despite all his limitations, how is it possible that he can continue to do what he does? 
And I think that's exactly what we said, I think, yesterday, where people come and say, how can you, how can you still believe in a God who does these things or a God who doesn't come through for you? And in times like that, we need to give the affirmative answer. I am able to do these things. I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me because in my weakness, he is strong. And people will be astounded and say, I can't believe this is the same person. I can't believe this is the person who has endured so much and yet he still trusts or she still trusts in God. Friends, that needs to be our witness. And people need to say, you've got to be kidding. I don't know how you can continue to worship a God like that. And we know that God has our best interest at heart. That God will only look out for the best for us. Only if we trust Him. Only if, like Paul, we accept whatever that affliction is and say, Lord, I'm not going to become better. I trust that you can use even this for your glory. And so may we have that kind of attitude. May we have that kind of outlook as we, as we go through life. And whatever you're going through right now, I pray that no matter how many times you may have prayed, that you will just learn to accept whatever you're going through and to look for God's purpose in it and how God can work His purposes in and through whatever it is you're going through for, for you, for, for, for your benefit, and also for the glory of God of God. And so let us bow in a moment of prayer. Lord, we just thank you again for this incredible scripture that sometimes is misinterpreted. We thank you, Lord, for for whatever this affliction was that you gave to Paul, that he was able to 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 endure it with the strength that you gave him, that your grace was always sufficient for him. And ultimately, yes, his his life was taken away from him. He was martyred for his faith. But Lord, as long as he lived, he knew he was living for you and that you were able to strengthen him and give him more grace in, in every circumstance that he found himself in. Oh Lord, may we have that same outlook. May we, it's not easy, Lord, for we are human and we can often just become uh, uh, just despondent and disillusioned with what we're going through and frustrated that we pray and we don't seem to get an answer. Oh God, may we, may we learn to be like Paul and just to accept whatever it is that we're going through and to look for ways of, of, of seeing that silver lining, of seeing your purpose in and through whatever it is we are going through. And so bless us this day. Uh, we just pray that you would continue uh, with us wherever we are, whatever we're doing this day. For those of us who've got meetings and important decisions to make, uh, Lord, you know exactly what's going on in our lives. Just undertake for us and may we continue just to, to look to you uh, in all things. And so bless us as we continue in your name, uh, we pray. Amen. Amen. So bless you all. Have a wonderful day further. And we'll continue with this passage in the next uh, couple of days and finish it off. So uh, we trust that. By the end of this, you will certainly know what Paul was getting at in these verses in chapter 12. Bless you all.